Hey, what's going on guys, it's Anson. So first of all, I want to apologize because I had completely forgot to upload the video showing how to set up the mutations on the Express app. I had thought I recorded it, but it seems like it didn't. So I looked back after uh, two people commented on my last video, I think, and I realized that I had made a huge mistake. So I do apologize about that. But in this video, I'm just going to show you guys the code and kind of just go through it because I already have it written already. And it just really doesn't make sense for me to just, you know, read right all over again. So I'm going to do my best to explain everything. And it's so similar to how you would write a query. So right now I'm inside my GraphQL slash index.js folder on the backend project. Now before you only should have had query root query inside this object that's passed into the GraphQL schema constructor. Okay, but here's the thing though. Inside here, you can actually pass in a second property or field and you can set that to the mutation query okay and that field is called mutation and you can set it to mutation query the same thing with root query because the root query or not the root query the, the query itself and the mutations are separate things so you want to keep it separate okay and of course you want to create your mutation query which is honestly going to be very similar structured to your root query okay it's literally nothing complicated but let's go into uh, name root mutation query it's the same thing we have two fields so far right we have update guild prefix the type it's going to return a guild config type now i think i covered this in a previous video yes i did guild config type and you guys should see that this is what it returns okay this is the shape of the guild config type and it returns the guild config type and we have args Okay, the args itself, they're taking two parameters, guild ID and prefix. And after that, we have the resolver function. Okay, it takes in three parameters. Uh, these two lines over here, we're destructuring the guild ID and the prefix because we need those two. We're checking to see if these two parameters are present. If either one of them are not, we return null. And the final check is if request.user, if this is not present, if the user is not logged in. Okay, that's what it means because if user is undefined, on the request object that means the user is not logged in so we return null and if this case fails then we're going to just check the database uh, we're going to search by the guild id and then we're going to update by the prefix okay because this first part is the search condition you want to search by the guild id because that's the most unique uh field for your documents okay then you want to update the prefix so we're saying update prefix and the last parameter is an object which takes in new field. And this just allows us to return the new updated data, which you will see in just a sec. And over here, we're just using a ternary operator. If config is truthy, then we will return config. So if the guild was actually found or the guild config document was actually found, then it was actually updated as well. And then we'll return it back to uh, the GraphQL. If it was null or if it was undefined or if it wasn't found, we return null. And same concept with updating the default role. Okay, we're doing the same thing that we did for our routes in discord.js. Okay, and well, first of all, again, we're taking in two args, guild ID and default role. This time it's not prefix, it's default role. We destructure both values. Okay, return null if any one of these things is true. And then when we search the database, we update the default role and then we return null. Hopefully this explanation made sense. I know we didn't really, you know, write all the code in this video because I already had it ready. But hopefully I was able to explain everything one by one. If you guys have any questions, please do let me know. But I honestly believe that this itself is straightforward as it is. It's literally the same concept as the root query, except this time it's just a mutation. And mutations pretty much update stuff. Okay? There's nothing stopping you from updating things when you make a query it's up to you the logic is what you implement but that's just the concept right that's just the concept we have mutations you want to separate mutations away from queries okay so if you want to add other things you could just expand upon it so let's say if you wanted to create a mutation for updating the mod log channel so you can do update mod log channel Okay, and then you can specify the type. Well, the type could return guild config type. And then the args would have to be guild ID. And then the type of this would be GraphQL string. And then you would have the channel ID, for example, type would be a GraphQL string. 
and there you go. So after that, you would have your resolver. Okay. Rx request. And then you would have it do whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, so now we're on the GraphQL app right now. If I click on docs and if I click on mutation, first of all, you should see this mutation over here. If I actually go here and if I get rid of this mutation, if I like just uh, get rid of just like that, if I refresh, we shouldn't see anymore. Okay, cool. And let's uh, refresh again. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and create some simple mutations. So let's say mutation. And we want to update uh, guild prefix. So update guild prefix. So I actually don't even know uh, which guild we're talking about right now. All right, I think this itself should work because this is the guild in the database. All right, so we can go over and create a new mutation now. So mutation update guild prefix. So guild ID. We pass in the parameter like that. If you guys have already seen the last like two videos on how to make the uh, graphical calls from the Apollo client. This itself shouldn't be super complicated. But let's change the prefix to dollar sign. And then remember, it returns a guild config type. So we're gonna ask for the prefix as well as the guild ID. Okay, and then if I click play, we have to update a prefix. If I change that. Now you can see that it's actually returning the updated value. If I keep changing it to whatever I want, it's going to return the new value. Now if I actually go over here and re remove this part it's in use of the true and if i try to change it now you can see that it returns the old value right but if i were to change it to this it will return the old value again okay so that's what this part does hopefully that part makes sense and that's pretty much it we can do the same thing for update default rule too there's nothing stopping us default rule go like d That's it takes in the rule default rule. And we'll just do four five six. And then we ask for the default rule as well as the guild ID. Let's update it. Four five six. One four five six. And then we just type in a bunch of numbers and you can see it's being updated. And of course if we wanted to query this stuff, we can, so let's just do get mutual guilds or actually let's do get guild config well first of all let's do get mutual guilds name id so we get the id and then we can ask for get guild config and then we can pass in the guild id just like that and then we can ask for the, the prefix and the default role and then guild ID. Of course, we can ask for the member log channel. We haven't done anything with that yet, but I'll let you guys take care of that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it made sense and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.